This is our DIY boosted board. And this is our Demon 2.0. And in today's video, we are going to be combining the two to make the ultimate carving machine. The idea behind this project is very simple. The boosted board was renowned for its flexible, legendary loaded Vanguard deck, which enabled for maximum pumping and carving. The loaded Vanguard deck in conjunction with the split enclosure systems made for an extremely flexy setup that enabled for very comfortable riding and put Boosted in a league of its own. For this build, we will be utilizing this aspect of the carving machine that the Boosted board was to create this DIY board, the flexible loaded Vanguard deck and the split enclosure system. Our Demon 2.0 utilizes double kingpin trucks similar to those on an Evolve, the biggest competitor to Boosted at the time. The Evolve Skateboard is famous for its carving abilities due to the double kingpin trucks, which enable for a tight turning radius and excellent carving abilities. We've created this exact same feeling on our Demon 2.0, but for the sake of making a boosted plus Evolve board, we're going to be just calling this the Evolve Drivetrain System. So that is what we will be doing today. We will be taking the loaded Vanguard with the split enclosures and attaching double kingpin trucks with massive 6374 motors, and we will combine them to make an ultimate carving machine. The first thing that we did was to unscrew the enclosure from the deck using the four screws that hold it into place. We did this so that we could detach the phase wires from the motors going into the ESC. Once those were unscrewed, we were able to flip over the enclosure and access the internals under that enclosure. As you can see here, we used a Foxbox Unity as the ESC for this build, and we also have a VX1 remote controller as well as a percentage indicator in there. After opening up the enclosure, we were able to unplug all of the phase wires. There are 4mm bullet connectors for the phase wires, and then we also made sure to unplug the sensor wires from the motors. Once all of the connectors were removed and the wires for the truck were free, we were able to undo all of the screws holding the truck into place and remove it from the loaded Vanguard deck to make room for the double kingpin trucks. We then did the exact same thing to the front truck, removing it with the four screws. Finally, we removed the Kagawamas from the caliber trucks to put them on our double kingpins on the final board. We also did the exact same thing to the 2.0, removing the trucks so that we could access them and adjust them to fit the Kagawama wheels. The double kingpins will be utilizing a 15-38 gear ratio with two 90mm belts. They will have the 38T Kegel pulley that fits perfectly into the 85mm Kagawamas. We just had to adjust the belt tension as these trucks came off of using some AT tires. The process of retrofitting a pulley to your proper trucks and get the proper tension is pretty simple by just sliding the pulley onto the axle, rotating it until the belt aligns itself, and then properly tensioning the belt by holding the motor back into place with your thumb, and then screwing in all four screws that hold the motor into the mount to hold it into place and get the proper tension. It's important that the belt isn't too tight or too loose so that it slips. We then put the 85mm Kagawamas onto the 38T pulleys and the axle. These simply just lock into place as they have the exact same core shape. They should snap in pretty easily and once those are on you can just tighten them using a T-tool. We then repeated this belt fitting process for the other side so that the other motor, other wheel, and other belt would be properly aligned. Once the rear truck assembly was complete, we put the double kingpin trucks on the loaded Vanguard deck to begin the final assembly of the board. We then put the Kagawamas on the front truck. We then mounted the rear truck with the drivetrain already assembled onto the back of the loaded Vanguard deck, utilizing a riser pad in the process for extra added smoothness with these smaller wheels. With the trucks mounted, we did a little bit of reorganization inside of the rear enclosure so that all of the electronics would fit as the phase wires from these motors are different from the other ones. We had to just make sure that they would all fit inside that very small and cramped enclosure, so we changed the orientation of the Foxbox Unity. After this was done, we rewired everything and plugged in all of the 4mm bullet connectors and the sensor wires into the Foxbox Unity before finally reprogramming it using VESC Tool 3.0. I won't go into that in this video, but I will leave a link to one of our previous tutorials in the description below. With the board all programmed up, we then tested out the board using the VX1 remote controller, and as you can see right here, it's loud and powerful. At this point, all that was left to do was to seal up the rear enclosure, which is exactly what we did. We flipped over the enclosure, made sure that all of the wires would fit in there without being damaged, and then also checked to make sure that the phase wires fit through that previous slit that we had made. It was a tight squeeze to get all of those 4mm bullet connectors and 12 gauge wire right through there, but we managed to squeeze it in. We then screwed the rear enclosure in using the four previous screws that we had used into the threaded nut inserts which are already inside of the deck. This technique makes for a very clean look. 
the battery pack on this build is actually an upgrade from the last boosted tutorial we made. This one is a Molly Cell P42A 21700 battery pack in a 10S2P configuration, and it's 302 watt hours, which will give us a great amount of range out of this board. We purchased this from Eastgate Alex. It was a custom made battery pack. And if you guys are looking for a custom made battery for your portable electric vehicle or electric skateboard, he is a super great option. We'll leave a link to his Instagram account in the description below and you can just direct message him to reach him if you're looking for a project. The battery sits inside the front enclosure of the board. This enclosure is very similar to the rear enclosure except it's a little larger. It's also held into place using four screws which go into the threaded nut inserts for that same clean look. It's very durable as it's made from aluminum and will protect the battery well. The charge port is also located on the front enclosure and is facing inwards for maximum protection from any of the elements. As a general reminder and for those of you guys that didn't watch our first DIY boosted board tutorial, the setup for this is simple. The front battery enclosure connects to the rear ESC enclosure through wires that go through the top of the deck. They go through a channel that we cut with a router in the top of the Vanguard and then through holes into the bottom where they connect into the battery and ESC respectively. You can actually kind of see the little bump on the top of the deck under the grip tape where these wires pass through. Though this design is a little bit more complicated and time consuming, it's also more worth it in the end for the aesthetic. Like I said, there's also a percentage indicator located inside of the ESC enclosure, which is a great feature to have so you know how much your battery has and how much your board has left when you're out and about riding. And now for the final step before this board is done, there are some belt covers which mount easily into the motor mounts. These are just held into place using two M4 screws. Though they are very tiny, they will keep a significant amount of dust and dirt out from the drivetrain. And just like that, we combine the two boards and this is what the finished project looked like. So there you guys have it, that's how we combined our DIY boosted board and our Demon 2.0 to create a boosted plus evolve like DIY board. The flex that the loaded Vanguard has is almost more flexy than that with the single kingpin trucks. As you can see right here when we bounce up and down on the deck, the enclosure will actually hit the ground, making for a super flexible ride. Here's it from a different angle, as you can see it provides almost a suspension when riding because the deck flexes so much. This creates a very smooth riding feeling as the deck absorbs a lot of the vibrations. The turning from the double kingpin trucks, although they are very tightened in this picture, is still very good and will provide for a tight turning radius compared to these single kingpins. The acceleration on this DIY boosted Evolve crossover is absolutely phenomenal. The dual 6374 motors just take off, providing such a strong acceleration. Considering that this board is meant to be a carving machine, the power and acceleration on this are absolutely overkill and completely unnecessary, however it's still a super fun thing to have. I will say though that if I were to redo this again, I would not put as strong of motors on it, as the acceleration is just too much. The hill climbing on this board is also absolutely incredible. It bombs up every single hill as if they don't even exist. The previous version of our actual boosted board clone had a battery that could only output 24 amps which really limited the hill climbing ability and power. However, with the upgraded 10S2P with P42A cells, it can now output around 70 amps so we are able to up the battery current which has greatly improved the hill climbing ability and the power of the board. It's still completely unnecessary considering this board's made for carving, but as you can see right here, it just demolishes these hills as if they don't even exist. The top speed on this board is not one of its strengths, and obviously it's not even one of the points of building a board like this, it's for carving. 
According to the Eastgate speed calculator, the unweighted top speed of the board is around 26 miles an hour, while the weighted top speed of the board is around 23 miles an hour. We personally don't even get close to those speeds, probably right around 23-24 miles an hour, just due to the instability of this board. The flexible deck combined with the double kingpin trucks do not make for a very stable ride at high top speeds, so we mainly keep it below 20 miles an hour, just for a nice cruise, not for thrill riding in high speeds. Top speed was never a priority on this board, so it doesn't bug me that we can't go that fast on it. Carving ability is what's more important. This board also has very good braking, as per usual, with any DIY board using a vesk based ESC. We currently have our motor brake current set to negative 70 amps, and with these dual 6374 motors, it makes the braking very strong, reliable, and powerful. Especially with the current reverse brake option, when you hold the brake long enough and come to a complete stop, it'll actually put you into reverse, which is a super useful feature, especially if you've gone a little bit too far down on the hill. The range on this board is also quite decent and is actually better than the actual boosted board was. Considering a 300 watt hour battery riding conservatively using 20 watt hours per mile, you can get about 15 miles of range out of the board. Riding more aggressively at say 30 watt hours per mile, which is very, very, very aggressive and usually is the amount you use on an all-terrain tire, you would get around 10 miles of range. So I'd say on the low end, you can expect 10 miles of range out of this board. On the high end, you can get 15 miles of range. Considering how compact the battery is, I'm actually very impressed with how much range the board gets. We also only ride around 10 to 20 miles an hour on average, which is our cruising and carving speed. So we do usually get closer to that 15 miles of range mark, which I would consider very good for the weight, size, and design of this board. This entire board was designed around the ride aspect feeling, as we wanted to create the ultimate carving machine with double kingpin trucks and a flexible deck with a split enclosure setup. The ride feeling of this board, however, was really a disappointment and I was really not that impressed by it. I'll start with the good and what I did actually like, and that is the carviness of the board. The double kingpin trucks in conjunction with the flexible loaded vanguard deck do make for a very carvy ride that does flow freely and feels very nice under your feet when you're just going out for a nice cruising session. However, that's just about where it ends and those same factors that make it so carvy also make it very unstable. I never felt like I was fully in control of this board. Even when carving, although it feels nice and you can carve deeply, it's also a little bit sketchy at times. The comfort while riding is decent. I do like the fact that the Flexi Vanguard deck does pick up a lot of the vibrations and dampen them onto your feet. However, from my experience, I don't really like the 85mm Kagawamas, although a lot of people seemed to love them on the boosted board and on their DIY builds. They're simply not for me, I prefer a much larger wheel, something above 90mm, either the Boas, the 110s, or pneumatics, just because that's what I'm used to riding and I think that comfort above all else is important when e-skating. This being said, all of the points I've talked about in terms of the ride feeling are completely subjective and are up to everyone's individual opinion about what they value in an e-skate. From what I've discovered, I don't like having a flexi deck and double king pin trucks. It's one or the other if I want to make a board that carves decently. Having both is simply too much in my opinion. And if I were to do this again, it's also important to have a set of larger wheels that can absorb more of the vibrations in conjunction with the deck to make an ultimate smoothness machine as well. That concludes everything that I have to say about this board. The remainder of this video is just going to be some riding footage of us riding the boosted board crossed over with double king pin trucks. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave us a like and comment down below what you guys think of this board and if you guys have any questions. We are very active in the comment section, so if you leave us one, we'll definitely get back to you. Also, if you've made it this far and you enjoyed the video and you want to see other content like this, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. We make lots of DIY electric skateboard, some DIY e-bike, and a couple DIY one-wheel videos. Additionally, if you're further interested in helping this channel grow, we've recently launched a Patreon account which you can subscribe to on a monthly basis as a patron and have access to some special features as well as help us grow as a channel. That concludes everything I've got for you guys today. Make sure to stick around and watch the super cool riding footage we have for this board. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.